You're watching RPTV and we're having a look at the Epsom Oaks, which of course takes place on June the 1st. Here with our anti-post insight, but I'd say I'm joined by Nick Watts and Graham Robway. Uh, so the gentlemen, it's tight at the top in regards to the market. You've got the likes of maybe the Fugue and Kissed in third in the market there. Uh, maybe then, Nick, is it maybe for you or definitely? Well, Which way are you going? <laughs> well, it was definitely maybe in the 1,000 guineas for me, and it didn't turn out to be the case because she was totally eclipsed by her stable mate, Homecoming Queen. Um, I was slightly disappointed with her that day because she's been the anti-post favourite for the race all over the winter. It looked very much as though she was a Ballydore number one coming into Newmarket, so you'd have expected her to be ready. Now, if that was maybe when she was ready, then I'm not sure there's a huge amount of improvement to come, even allowing for the fact that she might, she might enjoy going over a longer trip. But I don't see any reason why she shouldn't have been ready to do her best at Newmarket. And if that was her, if that was her best, then um, I'm not sure she's anything to be too concerned about the top of the market. Um, so I'm not impressed with her. Um, and I'm looking a bit further down the list. And we've, we've got the Fugue, Kist and Val. It's difficult to pick between the three of those because they all won their last starts really impressively by wide margins. Visually very, very good. Um, I'm going to go with Val, William Haggis's horse. Apparently he's only run two horses in classics and both have won, including Dancing Rain last season. Val won the same Newbury Maiden that Dancing Rain won last season. Um, and then I was impressed with her at Lingfield. Um, I thought she was well on top in the closing stages. Yeah, she, green. she was a bit green, but I think she'll come on for that. Um, and anyone who talks about the Canberra and whether she'll handle that at Epsom, I mean, we're really getting because none of them have been to Epsom before, so they're all in the same boat. And her father, Motivator, didn't handle it too badly when he won the Derby a few seasons ago, so I can't see it being a massive issue. She would have come on a huge amount for that, and I think when Johnny Murta got straightened up, she really flew and the penny might have just dropped quite late. Um, you know, she's unbeaten, she's going the right way, I think she could be top class, she's going to stay, and she's related to two very good horses, the William Haggis train, so he knows the family very, very well. I think six um, to one's good value. I think six to one. Out of those at the top, of all those that won their last starts really impressively, Val was the one that impressed me most out of the Fugue and Kissed. And Graham, out of those three, what would you be? Uh, what would be your take? And I mean, the Fugue, you won't see a much more impressive Musadora winner. Kist's an unknown quantity, but has blown her opposition away. And it says Val's kind of got the form in the book now in, in an, uh, well, a recognised Oaks trial. Yeah, a few, the Fugue was um, the... the pick of William Buick in the 1000 guineas and was upstage by its stable mate Starscope who finished second, the few finished fourth, but I kind of felt that Gosman felt that the few was a better horse and stayed she, on at the end. She proved it um, in, the, in the Musidora, she was impressive in the Musidora and the problem is I'm, I'm not sure it was the strongest race and there's not a lot of mileage in the price at seven to two, maybe five to two with Labrooks and three one everywhere else. That, if we're talking about the Labrook 7 and, and inside track, they're going 6-1 to one stand out on Kist as well, the stay mate. So, but I don't fancy maybe at all. I was a bit disappointed with her in, in the 1,000 guineas. Albeit, having said that, Aidan O'Brien has never won the 1,000 guineas with a horse making their reappearance. And these two winners of the 1,000 guineas, the homecoming Queen of Virginia Waters, have both had a run in the 1,000 guineas trial in Ireland. So probably maybe did need the run. But completely eclipsed by homecoming queen when you're beaten that far it's difficult it's to hard to be say. convinced when you're beating 12 lengths or well how can you say that, that all right she might not have been fit but should she really be being beaten so far by our stable mate and a, a three to one she's an awful price i think i would have liked kiss but i'm being put off by the fact that she's a bigger price than a stable mate i can't really understand why um val and kalima are the finished uh, first and second in the lingfield oaks trial you and i were there ted and i came away and you said to me Kalima, I'm going to back that for the Oaks. And I said, there's no way it'll be Val. But I'm going to put it to you back now that I think you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have backed her for the Oaks, yeah. At the prices anyway. Uh, Val, uh, I can see what you're saying, Watsi. She's a massive talent, but yeah, we don't know how she's going to act on the camera, but she looked, she looked all at sea at Lingfield. She was absolute green as grass. And if there is ever else that might get caught up by the camera, I would have thought a green horse like Val, she's going to need to improve and, and mature an awful lot mentally to win this race. And I, I thought Kalima, although was well beaten by Val, came from miles off a slowly run gallop to finish second, flying home at the finish. All right, didn't, no match for the winner. Val was a good winner. And if you're asking me what's the better horse, I'm going to say probably Val might be a little bit more talented. But you're talking about six to one Val, 14 to one Kalima. And I think Kalima's a little bit more straightforward. She's a little bit more professional. 
And when she gets that faster gallop, she'll thrive, um, at the, you know, in the oaks. And I think she'll definitely get around the hill because we've already seen, in, as I've said, she's very professional, she's a very straightforward ride. I don't think it'd be a problem for her coming down Tatnam Corner, whereas I'm a bit worried about Val going all over the track. And that might just be enough to see Kalima reverse the form with Val. So uh, at the prices, don't get me wrong, if Val and Kalima were, were the same price, I'd be saying, well, you might as well back Val because I think she might be the more talented horse. But for, for pure sort of maturity and, and the fact that Kalima did well to get so close off the slowly run gallop, whereas Val was better placed, I think that the, the disparity in their prices is too much. Eight points is too big, and I think 14 to 1 Kalima is more appealing than 6 to 1 Val. I think that could be the race, though, that, that does throw up the winner. Well, you, you reckon, in uh, my opinion, I mentioned that the races last week, there was very strange rides from Jim Crowley on Kalima, held up in last, had to pass every other horse at the running. Flying it, left to finish second. He rode it like he rode it like it. There was another day in mind. Like the Oaks was the big race, and and they're giving giving her a nice little way out to, to get a spot on. And look it, here, and Clady House have run in this yeah. before, before going on. Look, so. look here was beaten uh, in this before uh, in the Linfield Oaks trial before going on to win. So the, it's happened before with Beckett runners. Well, so Val's got no chance, and Klima no. beats it. So uh, yeah, you'll be buying us pint stick <laughs> when that's uh, when that's all that's all done and dusted. But. Looking further down the list, uh, Jez, but Paul Keeley's put up Scirocco Star in the weekend. Uh, I mean, we've got lots of uh, Kalani, we should mention, the Godolphin. Uh, I mean, come on, is there something that's got to be running into around third or fourth at about 40 to 1? Or is, is there not? Um, no, I'm going to be boring because I, I think the biggest danger to Val actually does come from Kalima. I, I agree with G Rod about that, and I think it was a good trial. And like you said, the president is there from Beckett that he finished second with Look here in the same race and then came on and won the Oaks. So, to me, Kalima is quite a big danger, and there probably shouldn't be the discrepancy in the price that there is, because for the reasons you've already said, that it came from the back and was not in a very good position um, to win the race. Um, no, there's nothing really else I like. I, I, Twirl was put in her place by the Fugue. Um, Chirocco style, you know, you could give a slight chance to. But it's, um, the one horse who potentially, if they let it take its chance, could be a decent price is better 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 who's currently 40 to 1 who probably would have won the race at chester last time had it been anything resembling decent ground whatsoever because i think the class would have shone through um if that hasn't taken too much out of her, it, it was absolutely quagmire at chester yeah. um if you run those two horses again the johnston horse um, better 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 i think would run all over her um aiden o'brien wasn't put off by the fact that she got beaten and said afterwards that she might still be going she's, to Epson. just outstay by mudlock basically exactly yeah. and she's very very well bred um she's one of these bally doll horses that could you know suddenly emerge from the from the ranks and, and prove herself to be very good so if there's something at a huge price then that might be slightly tempting but no more than that okay then so it's val to well for nick and we're well graham and myself are looking for klima to reverse the form it's gonna be a fun day in the bar so thanks for watching and see you all again soon